over the past 12 months, Paul has had more time to shoot shotguns. We have filmed him on walked up days, carrying out pest control, and on a fabulous game day at Ripley Castle in Yorkshire. All great fun, but it means he has noticed a few shot opportunities that he struggles with. Oh! And he can't work out where he's going wrong. Oh, I'll tell you what, you couldn't have done that any worse. So, it's back to school. <laughs> what is there to learn? I thought you knew everything. <laughs> Never too old to learn, David. <laughs> um, well, as you know, we didn't have our trips this year, so we're doing a bit more game shooting, a bit more pigeon shooting. Um, so shotgun shooting was a bit more, uh, a bit more fun on this year for me. But um, it's just certain targets I just, even on the game day, I struggle with, like long um, hanging targets, calculating lead, loopers that are sort of like just that little bit further away. So again, so you've got to like just put that lead correct every time. Um, I'm quite good at short, fast stuff. I'm a bit of an erratic shot, um, but the calculated straight line lead, which hopefully Ed's going to you know, put me through the paces today. That's what I want to learn, so I you know, try and practice that a bit more, so when I'm next to these hot shots on a shoot day, I can like, <laughs> hold my own. Have you had a lesson with Ed before? No, 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 he's been stalking with me, and I give him a good lesson on the old uh, range, because he's a bit, he's over there like, smirking at me. He, he's, uh, it, it's quite funny. He's, Please he, tell me, he's rubbish at shooting. <laughs> no, 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 he was good. When he said his coaching was good, but he actually, obviously shotgun shooter, yanks the trigger. And I got him stopping yanking the trigger, and he was like, you know, bullseye. So, yeah. Did he admit to yanking the trigger? Oh, totally. He's the, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he'd probably tell me to yank the trigger more. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> You've seen this man shoot. I didn't realise that. So I'm, you already I'm very know lucky. what you're doing. It's not a blank canvas, then. You know exactly. I've got, a, I've got a fair idea what we're going to be looking at here. So Paul's very, very nice. talented, nice. obviously. <laughs> He's a lovely young man. Um, Paul's very much got one tempo of shooting. He works on sort of very instinctive, very short, fast moves, which is fantastic for the right kind of targets. But on the stuff you've been struggling with, which is sort of the bigger, slower hanging stuff and the slightly more technical stuff, yeah. it's just the wrong shot. So from my perspective, what I want to get you comfortable with, which inevitably is going to feel strange to start with, is going to be a much longer, slower shot. So it's going to be rather than just punching into a spot, which is fine on the stuff that's taking shorter pictures, because you're one of the people who said, oh, I never see lead. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's going to be a problem when you start shooting big curly <laughs> stuff. You know you're going to have to have some awareness of it. A big part of that's going to be down to his gun speed and his technique. So we're going to try and slow his gun speed down, get him comfortable, feeling more connected to the target. And you're actually going to start seeing lead pictures developing, rather than just trying to go to a spot in space. Because when you start to get to this big floaty stuff that we're going to be shooting out here, there's an awful lot of sky around it, and there's not that much clay. So he needs to get a bit better at connecting into the bird and making a move, rather than just trying to guess a spot. On this long stuff. If your timing's off by a tenth of a second here and you're trying to punch into a gap, you're nowhere near it. You're in a different postcode, which was what was happening on some of that big stuff at Grimsthorpe, yeah, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah. going to try and get you working a different shot. To start with, you're not going to worry about hitting them, thankfully. Um, it's just going to be learning a new movement, yeah. and that's what we're going to focus on. Once we've got the movement drilled in... Left stance guard up like that, That's exactly <laughs> it, yeah. What we're going to do, David's going to start kicking you. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just going to start working through what the basics should be, so how we should look at setting the shot up. Once you've got used to the move being right, we can then start talking about leads and pictures and stuff, but that's, yeah. that's how I'd like to start off. So for me, I think the best bird to, to shoot, we've got like a 40 yard, steady, slow left to right coming from the B machine over there. It's a standard target, half spring, so it's just lobbing it up, nice and steady in the sky for plenty of time. This will be a perfect target where, to be fair, I'm sure you'd hit your fair share of them shooting instinctively, yeah. but I want to try and get you shooting them a different way. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be slowing the move down, talking about how we're going to set it up, and basically showing you the difference between what you'd do as a default and what I would like you to be doing ideally. That's where it is. is this likely to sort of upset his more natural shooting? <sighs> no, it shouldn't do. Um, the, the best way of looking at this is you're going to be teaching him shoot use two or three different golf clubs. So when you're on the tee, you want to be using oh, a driver. Like yeah, that's clever. So it all makes sense now when someone <laughs> intelligent is explaining it to you. Um, what we want to try and get him away from is just having a golf club that he uses on everything. Go, right, I'm in the sand trap, driver, I'm on the tee, drive. Right, this is where we're going to use this tool. This is where we're going to use that tool. And if you can start to understand where each one becomes relevant, it's going to make so much more sense for you because it feels easier. Because you've said, you know, you feel like you're in the wind a bit with the big stuff when you hit it you hit it but you don't know how it's happened exactly right. that's no good because yeah. if you can't tell me how a shot's developed and how you've got there i can't expect you to repeat the re repeat the expense yeah, yeah. you know it's it's, yeah. it's simple yeah. okay perfect should we have a look at them yes like a coiled spring <laughs> i am yeah Whoa. oh 
I'll tell you what, you couldn't have done that any worse. <laughs> Brilliant. That. Thanks. That's <laughs> that was very convincing. I mean, no one will know. <laughs> right, that's it. Pull. Okay, fine. See? <laughs> I mean, I actually told him that he should have tried to shoot it normally and hit it, so that's, that's a good start. Okay, so a couple of things that you're half right with and you're half wrong with. Yep. You look like you've slowed your timing down a bit from what I was expecting, yep. which is good, but you're not setting the shot up right. You're making life hard for yourself from the start. One of the things that you're going to find a lot easier, if we can get you comfortable with the idea of separating your eyes away from the gun at the start of the shot. So when you're setting up for this at the moment, you're coming right back into the machine. Yep. By the time you've actually picked that up visually, that's gone way past your barrels. You're having to chase into that. You've got yeah, yeah. no control of the shot, okay? So what's happening, you've got a target that's actually very slow and steady, and you've got a gun that's ripping through at a million miles an hour. If your timing's not on absolutely on point, you're gonna get blow, blow past it, yeah. which is what's happening at the moment. So the answer's not you're missing it in front. The answer's you're shooting it wrong. We're gonna try and get you to understand how we can shoot it a bit better, and it should feel, in theory, a little bit slower, a little bit steadier for you, okay? so. Have one shot at it for a start. Yep. One good shot's always gonna be better than two bad ones. Yep. <laughs> Every time you look at a target, your first question needs to be, if I have one shot and my life depended on it, where would I take this? And we're gonna build the shot back from there, okay? So looking at this, where looks good to you? Just sit before it drops away. Yeah, pretty much. So yep. almost over the top of the C machine, maybe a touch later. Yep. So you're gonna set your feet up just after to the right of the C to give you a bit of room to connect onto the bird and move away. Rather than your hold point, being on top of the trap, we're gonna come about half of the way back, which is pretty much where those dark bushes meet the skyline, yeah. okay? That's gonna give you half the space to push your eyes down to the left, and all you need to do with that is watch. So you're gonna watch the target come to your gun. As it's coming towards your barrel, you're gonna mount into it and slowly crawl off the front edge, okay? The key thing with this is it's a slow bird. We want a slow gun going into it. So once you've watched it connect into your barrel, you're gonna inch away one foot, two foot, send it. Okay, nothing more complicated than that. Easy, don't know what the fuss is about. Go. The hardest bit for you is gonna be getting yourself relaxed into the first half of the shot and letting your eyes do the work before your gun does, okay? okay. Oh. Ah. Ah. Ow. Did it. Tell you what, one take. <laughs> See if you knit this one in the middle. So good move, do exactly the same again, keep the timing. Well, so connect on, push away. Okay, slow it down a little bit for me. One of the things you don't look like you're quite understanding here is the line of the bird. Because yeah. you're shooting it ever so slightly earlier, it's actually climbing into the peak. So rather than pulling a dead straight line across, you need to come ever so slightly uphill. You're moving, your timing's looking okay, but come slightly uphill with the bird. You look like you're trying to punch down into a yeah, gap yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's not started dropping yeah. there. You've chosen where you're killing it. It's killing into, it's coming into the peak, so it's not started dropping. What it does after that's irrelevant. So this is a mistake a lot of people make on rolling targets as they read into them too late. That's pretty much going from A to B. So connect onto it, slow, steady stretch away, send it shot. If it means doing two or three, what you think is too slow and too steady when you're moving away from the target, that's absolutely fine. Well. Magic. And that should feel slow yeah. and controlled. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And this is going to be one of the sort of the overriding things you're going to find. When you've got these slow hanging targets, that should be a sign to you. That's going to be your start point speed wise. Speed of your gun is going to be dictated by the speed of the target rather than just going in with a speed. speed yeah, yeah. Learn from the bird and work away from that. That was a great move. Go again. Take your time. Remember what we did? Got two or three shots as a bit of an experiment. Yeah. Run everything on the shot 10, 15% slower than your brain wants to do it, okay? Because there's still a little bit of a push yeah, in there. Yeah. Try and take the edges off. If it means missing three or four, but missing three or four with real slow controlled moves, that's it's what it's, it's about. Really difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like... this is the opposite end of the scale from what your, your, is, sort of, your like... default settings over there. And what we're trying to get you to do is over here. And it's just getting your brain comfortable. You can see you understand the process, but actually making it feel natural is going to take a bit of drilling in. Yeah, it's quite hard, actually, because like, obviously, even with like, kickboxing stuff, you sort of like got that certain set in your head, drill you have to do. Yep. Obviously, I've shot like this for years. I'm trying to get this, yeah. But it's like if you, if you think, sort of cast your mind back to one of the first times you went in the gym 
and someone says, right, I'm going to teach you how to do a deadlift. They don't just chuck all the weight on the bar and say, take that off the floor. No. They say, right, the first few weeks, you're going to be working with an empty broom handle and you're going to be learning the first part, taking it off the deck. Yeah. That's fine. This is going really back to basics. The outcome, as in breaking the targets, at the minute, yeah, is right. secondary. Yeah. It's more getting you comfortable getting the movement and understanding why we're getting the move. So for the next three or four shots, as long as you're connecting with the bird and moving away from it really, really slowly, don't worry about anything else. Okay, just looking at the target, aware of where the barrel is, slightly uphill because the target's climbing, just do everything what you think is 25-30% too slow. Yeah. If you miss it by being too slow, we'll live with it. Okay. Oh. And yeah, you see, yeah, you're killing it, but you're killing that bottom edge, yeah. so make sure you're coming up. You're still shooting that as it's coming into the yeah. peak. It hasn't flattened off yet. Yeah. Everything is right with your move. Your picture's 95% of the way there. You need to change from this to this. Yeah. It's just a few degrees. That's all you're looking at. Oh. That's in the middle. Yeah, Careful, you might start to look competent in a second. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have to edit this. Mm. Oh. Slowly away. Perfect. Oh, okay. Little bit we will have more of Paul's tricky targets in the coming weeks. In the meantime, if you have been admiring Paul's shooting vest, Shooter King don't just do kit for stalking game days and hunting, they also do clay wear. To check out the whole of the clay shooter range, go to shooterking.co.uk.